fans of high quality entertainment. And speaking of fans, apologies for the background noise, it's my air conditioner. It's another muggy day in Ontario here. So in this video, I think I've done something similar to it maybe a couple of years ago, but I wanted to do another one. And I, I might have uh, actually missed some albums in my last video anyway. But these are the albums that I grew up with in the late 60s and early 70s. And, and my memory is of, because we moved in 1972, so my memory is of albums that I had before we moved. So anything up to and including 1972 is in this list. And I'm not including, of course, you know, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin, although the Rolling Stones are on this list. <laughs> but, uh, so there's going to be a few album albums like, you know, McCartney's first solo album and John Lennon's that I'm not going to talk about because most people that are Beatles fans grew up with those. But these are, for the most part, not as well known, some of them. And the first one on the list is very well known. Forget what I just said. But I believe this is the very first album by The Who that I ever heard. And my brother had bought it. And of course on the original vinyl it was like really cool because it would open like this. And it would have a booklet and everything. And I really liked it. So I became, I think this was the first time I, I actually really heard The Who. And then my brother also bought Live, <coughs> Live at Leeds. I think he bought this one first. I know that Live, Live at Leeds came up later. But I'm pretty sure he bought this in 1969 when it came out. So this is... Actually, now that I think of it, Magic Bus, which was a, an American compilation of, the, of Who tracks, like the, the pictures of Lily, I might have even had heard that and then this. But this is the, the one that brings up the memories of first listening to The Who, so I'll stick with this one. <laughs> Now I had, have two older brothers, and the second oldest, he was into Yes long before I was. And so I remember, he wouldn't let me play his records though for the most part, but I'd hear them. <laughs> uh, and I remember, remember hearing this and really liking it. I didn't get into it like my brother did though. Like he followed, you know, tales from topographic oceans and all that. I still didn't really buy anything by Yes. But I certainly enjoyed this, and I love, you know, the album cover and everything. So it brings back good memories. And of course, in the last few years, Yes is one of my all-time favorite bands. And this band I've talked about before, and I feel that they're, they're kind of known for like two or three big hit singles, and then their albums aren't really... They're very underrated. And this album I really remember my oldest brother having in his collection, and I played it a lot, so it's kind of a favorite of mine for Steppenwolf. And, uh, and it used to have the, the die cut here, so you would open it up and you would see the band. These are really poorly, it doesn't even have the picture and stuff. These are like when companies would just throw together a cheap CD of the original album. Oh no, I just broke it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've always loved Steppenwolf at your birthday party. And so, my oldest brother, Bob, I'm pretty sure he had this. Because I didn't, I didn't own very many albums when I was like 10 years old. Sly and the Family Stone Life. And around the same time, he also, maybe he bought their greatest hits first, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. But still, those two albums, and especially this, and there's a song in here called Jane is a Groupie that I really loved. But, it, you know, back when I was 10, I didn't know what a groupie was. I still don't. <laughs> but yeah, I always have loved Sly and the Family Stone. This, I think I own. I don't know how. I did have a paper route, so maybe I bought it. Or it was in a, 
I used to buy a lot of cutout dim, you know, albums that were cheap. Savoy Brown, Street Corner Talking. I, I loved that. I think I loved the album cover more than the album. <laughs> but yeah, I would, you know, back in the day, maybe some of you people that grew up in the CD format era wouldn't remember staring at an album cover for, for hours on end. Because we didn't have a life back then. There was no internet. <laughs> but yeah, I do love this album. Tell Mama is great, opening track, and Street Corner Talk, and great blues rock, and a great band. There's the whole picture of it. So yeah, I've, I've talked about some of these before, but I'm always getting new su subscribers too, so time to talk again. <laughs> so the Rolling Stones in the 60s, you know, I was a big Beatles fan, so the Rolling Stones, I liked hearing, you know, some of their songs on the radio, but I definitely wasn't a fan or anything. But then, one of my brothers, I actually ended up having this. I don't know, it was given to me or something. And this was when it had the uh, the corners off. I forget what you call that. Uh, polygon or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but this has their, you know, Honky Tonk Wo Woman and uh, Ruby Tuesday. And I loved this. 2000 Light Years From Home. So I definitely became a Rolling Stones fan after hearing this. Yes, 1971. My oldest brother, Bob, he was so hip. He bought Pink Floyd's medal. And, you know, thinking back, I love it more now than I did then, but I always loved one of these days. Echoes, uh, at the time, it was such, you know, such a long song, and back then, it was like too long. You didn't have the patience to <laughs> sit there and listen to like a 20 minute plus song, or at least I did, being a young guy. But of course, I still, and I love the, uh, the original gatefold, if it's in here, of the band. Yeah, I th always thought that was so cool. <laughs> I remember buying this album, and I probably bought it because I was really impressed with the track listing. I had a thing about time back in, back in the 60s, I think because of the Beatles and uh, you know, Hey Jude being seven minutes long and A Day in the Life uh, being five minutes long and then little snippets of songs. So I saw this album and some songs were like, it uh, doesn't actually mention it here, but it did on the original album, like it'd be like bells and then 10 seconds. Oh my gosh, a 10 second long track, that's so cool. And I love the album cover and the album itself. I don't think I loved it as much as I wanted to, but it still is a very good album. It's The Rascals. Once Upon a Dream. Yeah, very good album. And Dino Donelli, their drummer, he actually created that, so that's really impressive. Rod Stewart. My oldest brother, Bob, bought See, I'm thinking that maybe, no, see, I don't know. The, the one that I gravitated towards, though, I might have heard one or two of his earlier albums or something. Uh, every picture tells a story. I think my, my one brother owned it, but I didn't really, didn't really connect with it at the time. But his album, I don't think it's listed on here, it's in this box set. Uh, it is called Never a Dull Moment. And I love that album. I love all of the early Rod Stewart, but that one in particular. And the album cover was so funny and 
I love Once it. again, one of the earliest bands I became a fan of before Sparks or Bloister Cult or it, Take Two. This here is uh, one of the earliest bands that I became a big fan of after the Beatles. Humble Pie, Smokin', and I own this one. It was my own record. And I think I might have heard uh, their performance live at the Fillmore before. My brother had that, and I love that. But this one uh, has more good memories for me because, like I said, I owned it. Became a fan. Once again, I might have owned this at one point, but I think my my oldest brother, Bob, owned it first, and I could always play his records. And I really liked it. Jefferson Airplane, Volunteers. The only thing disappointing about this reissue, sounds great and it's remastered, is it doesn't have the complete gatefold, which was a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which I thought was always kind of funny. And then the album cover and back cover were pretty bizarre for, for the time. So yeah, great album. A Canadian band, and I didn't know they were Canadian until I had the album in my hands. And I was seriously impressed. And right now I'm al already thinking that, even though I'm talking about Share the Land by the Guess Who, I think the first album that was in our house was American Woman, which I loved, of course. But this, this has more memories for me because I actually owned it. And it was when I realized that they were Canadian. And that really impressed me. A Canadian band, and they're actually good. <laughs> That's the way I was thinking back then. Definitely my, probably my favorite band. Let me think this over before I say it. Yeah, I think this was my favorite band in the 60s after the Beatles and the early 70s. Grand Funk. And I used to uh, borrow records from this. He wasn't even a friend. He was just someone that I knew. And he was a really nice guy. And he's actually a Facebook friend. Not that I'm on Facebook at the moment. So thank you, Terry, if you're watching. <laughs> but I used to go over to his house and borrow, he'd let me borrow his records. I'd take care of them. And I'd actually bring them back, which is a good thing. And I think this, it might be the Red Album, but I'm thinking, well, the reason I, I picked this one is because I bought it with my paper route money. This might be one of the first albums I ever owned, and what a doozy of an album it is. <laughs> it's definitely my all-time favorite live album. And it was a double. I just uh, did a ranking and review series on this band, so I talked about this before, but one of, once again, one of the earliest albums I ever had was Bio Country by Credence Clearwater Revival. I think I had that the very same, probably the very same day that I got Abbey Road. It's just the memory I have. I know that Abbey Road came after this, but I kind of remember having both of them on the same day. One of my favorite albums from the 60s, I play, I've played this so much, and I love it as much as I did as a kid. And, you know, thinking back, it's kind of blues-based rock. And for a kid my age, 58, 60, yeah, about 10 years old, I, it's surprising that I would actually love it, but I did. Can't Heat, Hallelujah. And then, of course, now I've got more of their albums. But... And I'm pretty sure I got this in a cutout bin for like a dollar or something. I got into the really heavy stuff back in 1971. I still remember, I think the very first song of Black Sabbath I ever heard was at a friend's house. His brother was playing... Uh, Paranoid, the album Paranoid. 
and the song I believe was paranoid and it was it was like a drug it's like I want that <laughs> and so master of reality that's the one that I remember from the very early 70s just absolutely love it doing the dishes being forced to do the dishes this plane in the background it was just awesome along with all of their other early albums. Once again, one of the uh, very early albums that I owned. I don't know how I got this. I think maybe it was a Christmas present. And when I saw it, it's because Eric Clapton and Steve Winwood, Ginger Baker. But I wasn't that thrilled getting it. And I didn't even like it at first. But... I kept playing it until I, I loved it, <laughs> until I forced myself to love it. No, I really do love this. It's one of my favorite 60s albums, Blind Faith. Thank God it didn't have the original cover, because that would have really done something to me. <laughs> and I remember having this, the band Cahoots, as a kid, 10, 11 years old. I love the cover. I especially love the back cover. And I loved Life is a Carnival and When I Paint My Masterpiece. And then the rest of it, I just never got into. I didn't care for. And so it was kind of disappointing. I would, like I said, for, try and force myself to like it and forget it. But uh, just, I don't know, two or three years ago, I ended up hearing this again, on maybe on Spotify. And now I absolutely love it. I think it's very underrated, and it's my favorite album by the band, and I have some more of their albums too. We're almost done. I thought you were leaving. <laughs> my oldest brother Bob, yes, once again he had good taste in music. I think between my two brothers, Don would be well, they both loved the Beatles, but Don would be more into the progressive rock. Uh, King Crimson, not, nothing wrong with that. King Crimson and Yes. And Bob would be more The Doors, more of your typical classic rock. And uh, Alice Cooper. And so he, he would buy all the early Alice Cooper albums. And I think this was the very first one that I heard. And so I've always loved early Alice Cooper. The Bay albums. One more to go. And I played this last night. It's a box set. Atomic Rooster, Sleeping for Years, the studio recordings, 1970-1974. So the albums are kind of all over the place in this, but it's a great collection. And the two albums I, I remember my brother Bob owning were Death Walks Behind You, which I love the song, Death Walks Behind You, but the rest of the album I had, I just didn't care for. This is, this is sort of similar to, to what the cover looks like. It was called In Hearing Of Dot 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 Atomic Rooster is the one that I really loved. And, uh, but now, uh, since buying the spot set, I absolutely love all of their early albums including all of the songs on Death Walks Behind You. It, that was a great band. Although, we, although Vincent Crane kept changing the members every album, which kind of sad, but great music. Great memories from my past. So, let me know in the comment section below what, were, well, what you think of some of the albums I had first, and also what are some of your memories of some of your first albums that you own. Thank you. And I'll read all the comments. I don't just say that. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.